Heinsberg in North Rhine-Westphalia is home to a convicted pedophile and the local residents are very concerned. The man served a 20-year jail sentence. He was released over a year ago and now lives with his brother and sister-in-law. Many of Heinsberg's residents are outraged. They're convinced it's only a matter of time before he reoffends. A lot has changed around here. You don't see any children playing outside on their own anymore. Lots of children are always accompanied by their parents, and somehow they've lost a bit of their freedom. Everyone's constantly afraid. In 1994, the man known as Karl D. was convicted of raping and abusing two girls. Even though it was his second serious offense, the court ruling contained no measures for keeping the man in preventive custody after completion of a jail sentence. So a second ruling approving retrospective preventative detention would have been necessary. Acquiring a preventative detention ruling a posteriori has proven to be very difficult. The court stipulations are very tight. New evidence is required. In many cases, the new evidence is not seen as admissible by the Supreme Courts. This is why in the past, there have been few cases of retrospective preventative detention. The practice has often been rejected. The debate returned to the political agenda last December when the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg ruled that Germany's use of preventative detention was in part a breach of the European Convention on Human Rights. As a result, some 70 convicted offenders were set free. This, regardless of the seriousness of the threat they posed. This ruling has far-reaching consequences for domestic security and for our citizens. We don't know what could happen. We're releasing offenders despite the fact that experts say they are mentally ill and dangerous. For instance, 53-year-old Hans-Peter W. In 1980, he was convicted of raping two women. He spent 30 years behind bars. Then, after the Strasbourg ruling, he was released from preventative custody a few weeks ago. He now lives in Hamburg. Experts say he could potentially reoffend, so he's under 24-hour police surveillance at an estimated cost of 20,000 euros a week. I must stress that the police cannot take on the responsibility. We can try to keep these people under surveillance, but only to a very limited extent in a very few cases. The risk that they reoffend cannot be ruled out. The FDP would like dangerous criminals to be kept behind bars after serving their sentences only if this proviso was contained in their original sentence. Or if at least sufficient reservations regarding the individual exist. But the party's coalition partners, the Christian Democrats, disagree. In the long run, we cannot afford to do away with retrospective preventative detention. There have been cases where it has only become evident while the offender was already in jail that they will remain a threat to society after their release. Then the safety of the general public must take priority over the offender's freedom. But it's clear that in Germany, the issue of preventative detention needs to be reappraised. The FDP has proposed that dangerous criminals be monitored after their release with electronic ankle bracelets. An electronic bracelet could be an additional aid. That way, the offender's whereabouts are known. Obviously, when an offender is released from preventative custody, their release remains supervised. Their freedom of movement is restricted, and an electronic bracelet makes it possible to ensure these restrictions are observed. It doesn't help to know someone's whereabouts thanks to some dot on a screen. We need to know with whom they're in contact, whether they're approaching children or women. Others want to see the addresses of offenders who've been released posted on the Internet, like they do in the U.S. But German politicians across the spectrum reject the idea of such naming and shaming on the grounds that it would encourage the spread of lynch justice. But how should we deal with serious offenders after they've completed their jail sentence?
For now, the most likely option appears to be a new type of lock-up accommodation that's very different to a jail environment. Otherwise, Germany could soon receive a new rebuke from Strasbourg. Keeping people in prison indefinitely could pose legal problems. Keeping someone in a cell with the sign prisoner on the door until they've served their sentence and then just turning the sign around so it reads preventative detention. Separating these people from prisoners is a possibility, but it needn't be some kind of luxury prison. In Heinsberg, residents would be happy to see the introduction of such a scheme. But right now, they have to get used to having a convicted criminal in their midst. He might be under 24-hour police observation, but they still don't feel safe. We've seen him evade the police before, even though they're doing an excellent job. But sometimes things just happen too fast. My 16-year-old daughter used to go running in the woods here, but now I won't let her. Freedom versus public safety, it's a difficult balancing act for Germany's justice system. But right now, the residents of Heinsberg feel the system is failing them. 